of the common things that we get asked in, on the customer service side of from our dealer and from our customers is, where does that wire run? Where can I gain access to that wire? And I want to really touch base on that. What I have here is an empty shell. It doesn't have the inside skin on it yet, and we have all the wiring exposed. I'm going to pinpoint out some of our plug locations, the way our wiring harnesses run, and when I break it down, we're going to go step by step, but when I break it down, it's going to become a little bit more easier to understand. Now what we have here, we have a 2011 25 foot FB Eddie Bauer. The FB means that the door is in the rear, the bedroom's up in front, front bedroom. But all that said, basically the wiring all runs the same. When we break it down, we're going to have some AC wiring, 110, we're going to have some DC wiring, our 12 volt wiring, and then we're going to have our AV cables. Them's going to be our three set of wires that we that we run. And then we also have connections where we connect the floor harness to the ceiling harness and we connect them. I'm going to touch base on all of them. Very first thing, our AC wiring. When we look in this trailer, our AC wiring is all laid out between 20 and 24 inches off the floor. So the AC wiring is dedicated for anything 24 inches and below is typically where we're going to find that AC wiring. And, and look in the trailer and it all lays it out. Now we're going to talk about our DC wiring. DC wiring, if we look right up here, we got our two harnesses that run on each side of the trailer. The harnesses are going to be located right up here in conduit and that's going to be our DC wiring. They're going to be feeding all of our appliances, on the, all of our lights on the roof, it's going to be our fans, any, any DC components in a roof, it's going to be feeding them. The next thing are AV cables. Where does that AV cable run? The audio video cables are going to run about shoulder height in a trailer. I'm, I'm roughly 5'8", five, five they're going to run about shoulder height. If we look up here, these are my AV cables, my audio video cables. The door's in the back on this, which means the radio is going to be in back around the dinette area. I'm going to come back here and look, here's my AV cables. This is where they're going to plug back into the, the rear of our radio, our disc changer. All back, there's our AV cables. They're going to run now on top of this window bow all the way around. Going to come up again, remaining shoulder height and then they're going to drop down here just for our TV area. So they're going to pop right down in here and behind the refrigerator cabinet, poke out inside the, inside the refrigerator cabinet, and then we have it. On the audio video cables, this is an Eddie Bauer, so this is a rear hatch. This rear hatch opens. This is where now my, uh, my booster is going to be located, and my uh, cable and my satellite hookup is going to be located right up here. If this wasn't an Eddie Bauer, they would be housed right down here underneath the dinette and then they would route out and come up through. So that's going to be the layout for our audio video cables. Just right in this area, it's going to tee off of here and then our audio videos is going to come right up here for our bedroom TV. So again, back in through the, back in through the wall. If we need to run a wire, we can certainly gain access because this is all cabinets here we would run the wire not in the wall but we'd run it behind the cabinets under and through the cabinets and be creative on how we're running the wires. The next thing that I want to talk about is the 12 volt wiring or the DC wiring. DC wiring basically we have two harnesses. We have a harness that's in the floor or floor line and then we have our ceiling harnesses. These ceiling harnesses are located right up here on the, on the sides. They're going to drop down and here comes my harnesses that's feeding it. Two harnesses. These harnesses are our best friend when troubleshooting shorts. So the harness is going to be tugged right underneath here, right behind the cabinetry area, and the, and the vanity is going to set right in here, so they're going to be sandwiched in behind the vanity and there's an access hole for them. That's our ceiling harness for our DC. On the bottom side here, then, we got our floor harness. We got some 12 volt consumables down here on the floor line as well. This is going to be the harness for them just these Packard connections and they're going to plug into each other right there. This comes real helpful if we're trying to identify a short. If we got a short or we got an open somewhere that we're really trying to find out what's going on, I can quite simply unplug that and eliminate half the circuit. 
Another common thing is, well, if we got to run a wire, how are we going to run it? Actually, we have a cable raceway that runs right here in the floor. You can't see it, but this is what it looks like. It's a galvanized pan. Got two sides of it. We got a small side and a larger side. The larger side is going to be for our DC wiring and all our AV cables. The, lar the smaller side is going to be for our AC wiring and that's going to sit just right down here underneath the floor. It's always going to be in the center of the axles right around the axle area. That's going to be underneath the floor and we utilize that. If you can look underneath here you can see the wires coming through. They're coming through on the other side and then we got our 12 volt wires. They're going to be on one side on the other side. They're laying loose in there. So if we have to run a wire from one side to the next and we identify that there's a shorter or wire that's cut, we can definitely just run the new, the new wire. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is our monitoring system. You remember that we talked about our floor and our ceiling harness having a connection? We have exactly the same thing on our connections for our monitor panels, our tank sensors. Our tank sensors are just, just um, hooked up by a communication cable, flatline modular cable that's in the wall. Here's all three of them right there. They're going to be housed inside the wall. They're going to run down. Now watch me run these down. They're going to run down behind the galley. They're going to go into the main harness. This main harness then dives underneath the floor. It's going to go underneath the floor line. It's going to come up over here. It's going to pop up and right here they are. Okay. Here's our other connection. Remember we had the Packard connection on this side. This is going to be our connections for our gray, our black, and our fresh. Gray tank is going to be the gray wire. Black is going to be the black and tan is going to be the fresh. But again, when we're, we're troubleshooting the system, if the customer says that his monitor panel gets hot, well, resistance equals heat, so we know that we may have a short there, we can unplug this and see if the erratic stops on the monitor panel. We can always come to this area before getting too deep. Or if he's saying that his monitor system isn't working, I can take and I can plug a new sensor in here, apply sensor to that pressure sensitive diode in the sensor, and we should be able to watch them lights come up and down on the monitor panel. So real quick, I can identify what side of the system that's, that's, uh, we have a problem with. Very, very quick, I use these an awful lot. These connections are always going to be housed around the wardrobe area. Unless we're talking like a 20-foot trailer, then they're going to be underneath the dinettes. But these are always housed just right around the center panel because they're coming up through this side here. Another thing that I would like to talk about is the solar panels. Our trailers are pre-wired for solar panels. Just coming right up through here, we can see the wiring for the solar panels coming down. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come right out of this main harness. This is the main harness for the solar panels. It's going to come right down here. Green is going to be ground. Yellow is going to be positive. And they're going to connect right up here. Right in this housing, just right up in this, this area and they're going to go right through the roof. Now this, this unit has the optional solar panels already installed. If they weren't installed, these wires would just be coiled right up there waiting for the technicians. So they're going to run down, they're going to run back in this main harness, and then they're going to come right up front here around the battery disconnect switch. We have our blue Cat5 wire, the communication wire for it, and our green and our ground. And they're always going to get hooked in right in here. Uh, the controller will get hooked into this area, and then the controller will go to the bus bar. So it kind of lays things out a little bit, little bit simple. Well, I hope this was helpful. I mean, we talked about a lot of wiring in this, in this little short 10, 15 minute video. I hope this was helpful because it really does simplify things. When, when we get down into the field, this is all covered up and now it makes a little bit more sense. We're able to visualize how it, how it looks. Thank you and make it a great day. Seven-way connection. The seven-way, if we look, 
is going to come, the seven way power cord is going to come right up through the floor, right up through here, and it's going to come into this, this Bargman box. This is where all of our connections are going to be. So this is going to be one connection for the seven way, and if you actually look, our charge line, this black charge line is coming right off of it, going to our bar. So the, that's going to be one connection for our seven way. So if a customer comes in and says that he doesn't have any lights in the rear of the coach, this is one area where we're going to be able to inspect. We're going to verify that we have proper voltage right up in this area. There's one more connection for the rear tail lights. This is everything coming off the front. This is one connection. This is our first primary connection. Then there's a secondary Packard connection in the rear of the coach. I'm just going to walk you back and I'm going to show you that second connection. Okay, now the second connection is going to come back here. It's going to run through our harness. It's going to run through the floor harness. It's going to come underneath here. And then we have a Packard connection right back here. This Packard connection here is just going to be for the lights from this point backwards. So this is going to be our roadside, our curbside tail lights, our clearance lights across the top, and then our license plate light. But every trailer has one of these. It's going to just be a Packard connection that plugs it in. Here's our main harness coming off. This is the harness right in here for the, for the tail lights and all of our clearance lights. It's going to come off and it's always going to be right around in this area. Sometimes it'll be underneath here on a classic. If there, this is a classic, that'd be a cutout. It would be right here. Others, it's going to be like a little 19 footer that's going to have our shower here in the corner. They're going to be housed underneath the shower kick pan, but them lights are always there. And they're our best friend when trying to identify a short. If a customer comes in and keeps popping, popping fuses in his tow vehicle, that his light clear slides keep breaking or, or keep blowing, we could come up here and we could unplug this, identify if our short stays stays constant and if it does then we can start looking in some of this area but how these wires run get a lot of questions on how these rear lights run our main harness comes up this is our Packard connection right here our main lights run up they're going to run in two and they're going to split right here beneath this window bow there's just going to be a splitter in it the bottom half the lights are going to come over here then it's going to come up and it's going to tie into our clearance lights, which we see here. So again, it splits right here. It's going to come up and it's going to tie into the, into the clearance lights right over, right over here on this side. And then our other wires is going to come up right across the top and tie into them as well. So it all kind of lays out. Again, on this, if we would need to get in there, we can take our lights out to gain access to these connections. We can go to our Packard connection here and unplug it to make sure that we, our fuse still stays constant. If it doesn't, then we know we got an issue there as well. All right, go. Okay, now we're on the inside of the trailer after we have our inside skin in. Well, a couple things that I want to point out. Our connections is going to drop down here. These are going to be our DC wires. They're going to drop down here. This is going to be our connection again from the floor to the ceiling harness. That connection's always going to be here on the curbside if it's an FB. If it's not an FB, we can find them on the roadside again. But anyway, these connections are going to be here. These, this is a connection that connects the floor to the ceiling harness. And again, remember now, that wire runs through the floor. It's going to come right through, right through here. It's going to follow on that wire raceway all the way up through, and it's going to come on the other side. So this wire is connected to that wire, and that's our chassis harness or our floor harness. Something else I want to point out, our uh, connections for our monitoring system, the CatCon monitoring system, black, gray, and fresh, are going to be found always right underneath the wardrobe or always right around the, the wheel well area in this facility area. This connects the floor to the ceiling harness for that. That runs all the way under, then back up to the monitor panel. Coming, coming back a little bit farther, these are going to be our audio video cables dropping out of the wall. Now, just to recap, AC wires is going to be about 24 to 27 inches off the floor line. Coming up a little bit farther, my AV cables are going to be housed right about shoulder height, and these cables are running right through here. And then my DC cables are going to run right down through the roof. Coming up a little bit on the back side here, this is my connection for my tail lights and my clearance lights across the back. That's always going to be housed right around this area. On the classics, it could be found back in this area, the flying clouds back in this area. But this connection is always housed back in this 
back in this area. And again, that this runs up the wall, ties end up here, one runs this way, and one runs the other way. So let's go up and we'll see a trailer after it's completely built, and I'll pull out these same points for you as well. Okay, now we're on the inside of a trailer, the same 25-foot FB that's already built. You notice we have our furniture on it, and I just really want to point out them dropouts or where them harness connections are so we can gain access to it. The very first one that I really want to talk about, it's an FB, so the door's in the back. So my harness is going to be here on the curbside right around the vanity area. I'm just going to walk in, and together we're going to find them harnesses. I'm going to come into the, come into the bathroom area going to drop down, open up my vanity cap, and then they're going to be housed right back there in that void. So I'm just going to come back in there, reach for them, and right, right here they are. These are my tanker connections. So this is my floor in my ceiling harness. That's where I connect them. So if I got a short in my ceiling, I can start right here and eliminate half of it. Or if I have a short or a fuse that keeps popping, I can unhook that and I can just eliminate half the circuit really in a hurry. That wire raceway is going to be located right here. To gain access to the other side of the wires, I'm going to open up this compartment and my wires can be found right underneath right underneath here on the back side. Another thing that's going to be housed in here is going to be my connection for my monitoring system. I can pull on them and right here, you can zoom in, that's going to be the connection for the monitoring system. Right there, that Packard connection. Again, my three wires, my, my gray, my fresh, my tan. And that connection is going to be housed right in there as well. So again, that's another connecting point for the for the monitoring system. Coming back a little bit further, you know, I told us about the Packard connection that we had for our, tis, our, our rear tail lights and clearance lights that runs right down in here. I'm going to find that connection. It's always going to be housed right underneath these dinettes. Now this is actually an Eddie Bauer where the dinettes are, are made to lift up, but if not, that connection is still going to be down here. I will take this end panel off down here and that connection is going to be housed right underneath there so I can gain access to it. If it was a classic or a flying cloud they would be housed up underneath here. An international they would be housed up underneath there. So there, that connection is always there. It's just uh, with the configuration of furniture can be found in different many ways. We're underneath the bed on the front of the unit and this is where our battery disconnect solenoid is going to be housed. Our Bargman a uh, seven-way controller box is going to be hooked up. We're going to find the one end of our solar panel wires are going to be here. And all that's going to be housed underneath the bed. I'm right here. It's going to be housed right underneath here. You can see I got my I got some of my wires here. These are going to be some of my seven-way wires, but they're all going to be housed underneath there. This is made removable, so if we need to get in there to do some testing, we can get in there. Well, you know, we've talked about a lot of wiring. We've talked about our AC wire and the location for it, the DC wire and up to the top, and then our audio video about shoulder, shoulder height all the way across the trailer. We've talked about a lot, and I really hope this simplifies things when we're actually looking for the wire, how to, how to route a new wire, if we've got to run a, a wire from the center of the trailer to the, over to the other side, or if we're looking for a short, where our connections are going to be at. So I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.